we're seeing Western Wolves sort of picking up a, a a slightly different team, I guess you could say. You got Nunu Jungle, something I've not seen in a tournament play for a long time, and it, you know it's all well and good to people going, oh, he's blind all the time in solo queue or something like that. But uh, tournament play is very very different from solo queue, and you have the best in the world playing in these events, so you've got to be pretty confident to bring it in a final of a monthly tournament Welcome when you're one nil down. So I am intrigued to see how Solo Gamer is going to play this one for Western Wolves. Again, we've got Warwick up the top there. The absolute correct pronunciation there, Joe. I'll uh, just <laughs> say that. <laughs> I pulled I pulled up uh, um, a freak on this in, while we were in, uh, in, a, in Kiev. And, uh, of course, he said, no, but I get to choose how they're pronounced because I do the, do the Summoner Showcase. So Szechuani <laughs> could have been pronounced any way, probably. If you look at the name, you can pull out anything. But he decided Szechuani, so everybody suddenly says Szechuani um, instead of Warwick. But anyway, I don't want to go down that route. I, go, I get drawn into this one too easily. <laughs> so uh, so easy to bait you out just by <laughs> saying that name Warwick, falsely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Falsely balled into it. But so it's uh, WWW, I guess we could say, for uh, Western Wolves Warwick. So it is going to be Yamoto Cannon, and uh, Tab's going to be helping out Nunu. So it looks like he's going to be starting Wolves and then Blue. Meanwhile, Malunu is doing exactly the same with his little presents. One of my favourite skins, actually. Oh, I hadn't timed it right. One of his presents blowed up before they uh, came in there. Oh, don't steal it. <laughs> Which he nearly stole it away there with that lay waste. I think he delicately placed it there. He's like, mm, not sure if I'm going to steal it away from him. Anyway, solo mid. Solo mid, solo gamer, sorry, is just going to take away the blue. He's going to get a bit of help with Yamoto Cannon. So the lanes are going to line up. It is going to be Lanewick up top versus Riven. In the mid, it's going to be Morgana versus Karthus. Kind of expected. Down the bottom, Kerp is going to be taking away the Golem. And it will be Kerp with Lorden on Sivir and Tarek against Ash and Soraka. So, two strong lanes down the bottom, actually. So, again, it's going to be that stun and boomerang blade from Kerp, along with Slepper maybe throwing a little bit out there. And I'm not too sure what these two junglers are going to offer. Let's see how Nunu is going to go about this one. He's already heading towards the Golems. I don't think he's going to come around the back of Angus. I think he's going... Yeah, he's actually looking towards Red. He wants to catch out. He's going to hear that. He will have heard that. He will have heard the presence going down there, and that's ballsy play because he would have heard it. And he's taken away the red straight away. We're going to keep our eye on this one because this could go either way. Is he going to have it quick enough? I think he will do because he saved. Yeah, he saved Smite. So very well played there. So he's double buffed already. Did Malkai just catch him out? He must have seen him there. Now he's going to walk through. Double buff. Malkai going to dive on. I'm not too sure if he's going to have enough. Oh, he might do. Now you can see Riven diving down there. He will have the speed difference. Will Solo Gamer get away from this one? I think he will. Oh, there's a flash. Flash again. And the Maokai dash following in through the flash. That is a little bit unlucky. Oh, and it's given the double buff to Angush. It's given the double buff to Angush. That has gone horribly wrong for Western Wolves. And you got that's so unlucky just getting that flash. And Whether it was unlucky or well-timed by Maokai, I don't know. But that is just... That that was really going to give a big advantage in top lane. Yeah, and that was absolutely brilliantly done as well there from uh, Maokai to get that flash off. Down in the bottom, Kerp and Lorden are facing uh, a little bit of pressure from the Ash from Slepper, who we saw playing so well with Ash. There goes the volley straight into the brush, catches both of them off. Meanwhile, up at top, Warwick's going to be facing uh, a little bit tougher of an early game now that his opponent is wearing both that red and blue buff right from the very get-go and obviously first blood going over to absolute legends and that's really uh you know a bit of a dream start for them um in this one with that advantage given with the kill for uh riven plus those buffs as well it's going to be a bit of a nightmare i think for western wolves anyway i see nunu now getting himself the second red of the game for him oh, hopefully he holds on to this one a little bit longer than the uh than the last one as well down at the bottom, again, if you look at the very early CS, counts 27 to 21, so Ash got that tiny lead from that one. Need to be careful that it doesn't be, uh, isn't going to be extending too far. Actually, Slepler starting to uh, work his way a little bit more forward. Needs to be careful of that stun constantly coming out towards him in the middle. 
We have the uh, CS there between Tabs and Extinct. Tabs 37, Extinct 46. So early lead. I think he's had Wraiths uh, in and amongst that one, though. As the Carthus. But still, absolute legends. They're 1-0 up in this best of three. And this could be their game that wins them the tournament. Well, it's very, very early days. We do have a uh, solo gamer coming down the bottom now. We got oh, up at top. We are going to see Yamato Kan. Oh, he had to flash away there. That was great timing with Malkai coming in. Go on, Demon. Yeah, no, it, he just walked straight through a uh, water thing, so it, it, absolutely nothing happened down the bottom, honestly. Um, we do see Tabs actually struggling low on mana in the mid there, so he's uh, just about fending off. Carthus says so CS was between the two 58 to 51 very even still in the mid again like he said he did take away those wraiths earlier on while that action was happening for the first blood meanwhile Nunu is uh, is doing his best to catch back up on his <coughs> honestly as I choke up um, he's uh, I'm just looking to see where he's leveling up he's gone, he's gone one across the board at the moment and as soon as he dings up we'll see which way he's going to be going with that we'll keep an eye on Maokai as well I think he's just hit four. What's he going to level up? <laughs> if he takes down his wolf ever, <laughs> the longest ever, he's gone with consume. Okay, that's pretty obvious. It was a, a foregone conclusion, really. Sapling toss coming out from Maokai as well. Looking up towards the top. Let's have a look at Lanewick. Lanewick's going with the uh, hunger and strike and a bit of blood sent in there as well. Angus, in the meantime, who had that double buff, is now wearing, worn off. So he's going to back away and go and buy. He's actually leveling up Broken Wing, which is... It's one interesting thing we've seen with the ribbon built. It's uh, definitely been a, a broken wing or key burst. They've been switching between of late. Um, obviously, I had those few changes. Down the bottom, let's have a look at Ash. What a shock. He's building volley. There's no shock between that one. Kerb as well. <laughs> building the boomerang blade. Kind of obvious between these two. In towards the mid. Yes, it is going to be uh, tormented soil. And Carthus will be building lay waste. Yes, what a shock. So we're uh, pretty standard build between the two. Oh, Extinct just getting caught out there. And they just came up and he, he I think he actually contemplated, should I pop my ulti or ulti, not? Yeah. yeah, and then sort of, no, no, probably not the right time. Riven is going to place a ward. Yeah, just place an award down the bottom there. Actually, uh, Kerb going fairly low here. Nice boomerang oh, nice. blade across repaired. And that's going to strip him down. And he's like, troll a lol, heal. No problem for me. And we are going to see that bottom lane for Western Wolves going home now. Let's see what Kerb comes back with. Triple Doran's blade right off the bat. So he's going to be uh, having a nice damage. Double Doran's blade for Ash at the moment. But how much gold has she got? Okay, so 700 gold there or thereabouts on Ash and we are now seeing blue buff going over to Tabs as you mentioned earlier on he struggled a little bit without that in that mid lane but now should be uh, a lot more uh, sustainable in that lane against Extinct who uh, you know you can see he's running straight in there trying to uh, duke away from any possible well combo that comes out and actually managed to land them both perfectly great stuff from Tabs down at the bottom let's see if Kerp now is going to make a big difference as oh, <laughs> puts a boomerang blade across it was a little bit too late. I actually thought it hit, but apparently not. Sleeper, uh, Slipper now is the one that's going to take the damage. Dodges away nicely from that boomerang blade. And with eight and a half minutes to gone, it remains to gone. Eight and a half minutes gone in this one is what I wanted to say. It's still one to zero for Absolute Legend. Solo the game and just getting himself a ward down. Nothing really to invade anyway in that top side. Yeah, and we're seeing Maokai with another early oracles. It's becoming uh, flavor of the month of late for the junglers to be going back to it. Oh, up the top, though, it's going to be an ulti. And on towards Angus, the tower hitting him as well. The Carthus ulti going out, though, on towards Yamoto Cannon. So that's trying to force the damage. You can see the blood sense actually on, and so they're going to see Angus. He knows he's pointing away, but he doesn't want to die for it. He's going to continue to just pick up the CS on tower. Back in the mid, though, you can see Tab's also getting dived on. I think this could be a kill here. Will pop his ulti off. It will actually proc. Oh, the sapling's surely going to finish him off. I think it will be enough, but it doesn't matter because Extinct used the flash and <laughs> then lay waste <laughs> to steal the kill. Right, that is my kill. Your sapling's <laughs> not going to get there. Actually, I think he would have got away from that sapling anyway. I'm not honest. sure. I don't think so. <laughs> Either way, good stuff. It's always like the most annoying. The only thing that's more annoying to be killed by is a Soraka banana. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Slowest no moving savage. object in the land. Prepared, gets stunned down the bottom. Oh, that's surely going to be prepared going down. Had to flash away from his Silver ulti used. Will it be enough to finish him off? Has the heal as well. Trollalalalo. And then stuns him. And that was the Ash our ulti arrow used up to try and stun him off. Oh, Lordy going balls deep. Dives onto the tower. Tries to take a hit. Not going to be enough. And Slapper gets away with his life there. But that was uh, even kills between the two there. Could have easily gone the other way. And a lot of heals burned out as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's even that many heals in that bottom lane for how many we just saw. That was ridiculous. Soraka walking away, walking away, eventually managing to uh, catch up. But it leaves Absolute Legends. They're still 2-1 in the lead from this one. Malkai just having a bit of a sniff around middle, but he's not going to be able to catch tabs out there. Meanwhile, Nunu, have we even seen him on a lane yet? I think he's just uh, more in a mindset after dying that he has to stay in that jungle and catch himself up. Indeed, up at top, we are seeing Maokai in and amongst everything as well. Does Yamato Kanan know? I'm not sure that he really does know. He's actually going to go in there. He's going to ulti in onto Anguish. Ulti used by Maokai, but not in the right place anyway. And I think that Warwick may even uh, stick around for this one. And he's got that lifesteal coming out. And Angush is going to be forced to go away. The CS up at top 68 to 68, perfectly level. I would have maybe expected that to be slightly an advantage for Riven, to be honest, after the damage that they did earlier on to him and the fact that he had that double buff right from the start. But great job for Lanewick at this one. Very good job. And at the moment, Riven, with that Brutalizer, is trying his best to... Uh punish onto Warwick and every time he's been pushing on there and you know he got that danger the fact that Yamoto can and can just pop the ulti if you're within tower range he knows exactly how far it's going to be and look at that he's freezing the lane up the top there he's not hitting anything just keeping it let it stay where it is and just use up any yeah just just perfectly last hit him freezing the lane very nicely let's have a look back down the bottom and absolutely nothing happening. Wicked. Let's go back. Oh, it's going to be a stun as well prepared. That's going to be Boomerang Blade straight across and followed up by a heal. We've actually not had any dragon attempts yet. We're up to 12 minutes, Joe. This is going for a long time. Ah, okay. Tabs is just wiping out. In fact, both AP carries now actually keeping up with each other, wiping out the wraith. So the junglers are getting no joy whatsoever from any of those. Having to... Uh, a fierce fight in terms of CS, and just look at it, the difference. 126 to 138, that's on the bottom, I knew that would happen. As soon as the Tarek Sivers ulti manages to, a uh, stun manages to land on him, and that's going to be a Karthus ulti. I'm having a look towards the top, it was going to be Warwick, I saw he backed away from the turret. Now we've got again another push on towards Slepper, they're going to have to back away this time around though. So a couple of kills back to back that I completely missed. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, that's the great thing uh, about Karthus ulti, if Karthus is on your team, um, that is, you think, yes, I just got away from that one, I played awesome in that situation, and then Karthus presses R and wins the world, um, so is life. Uh, yeah, down at the bottom, Kerp, he's been healed up nicely by his uh, Tarik, and he's ready to keep pressing, there's a lot of pings going down here. And I think it's so. I think those pings are from someone other than Maokai, telling Maokai, hey bro, your jungle's up, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, but he's going for Dragon, and that's a wise choice, I think, if he's going to pull it. There's no, no vision of it. Go for it. Why are they not They're not even attempting it? Karthus is going, no, actually, I want blue. And I'm going to return to lane. This is this is going to be a long time for a Dragon here, Joe. This is a very, very long time. So Karthus, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Warwick has lost his tower up the top there. That was obviously because of that death he just had to Riven at the top there. And Riven has gone double null magic mantle up top there so uh, not liking something and he's <laughs> to build those mercury treads in a second looking towards Maokite where are they going are they going to try to pick out the blue buff they haven't really have the timer of it in fact Tabs has already got it on him so they're not going to counter their ping goes down on Warwick there I think Maokai is going to head around the back of him yes he is so let's see how this one goes. You can see Yamoto Cannon now being pushed back. To, yeah, he's going to come straight around the backside, and he's been caught in a nasty position here. That's going to be enough. Having to use his ulti on towards Malco to try and gain a bit of distance, but he's not going to have anywhere and over enough lifesteal to get out of this one, and he's just going to get picked away. Meanwhile, down the bottom there, you can see that it was the caught out Karthus. That would be a dead Warwick, and Karthus also goes. But that's actually triggered the dragon for uh, Western Wolves, so... Despite the fact they've used all the time up there, it is going to be a wise choice. And, well, Kerp's going to pick this one up. Immediately comes back down, uses his spell shield to block away, to continuing to push on towards Slepper there. Slepper having to use his Ash Arrow to just prevent him basically going in his face. 
and backs away from that one. So very, very even, Joe. Still 4-3 advantage for uh, Absolute Legends, but you can see the gold advantage is still only 1k difference between the two. Yeah, real tight game, and I'm not sure it was in chat. It was Extinct who said real farm fest, and he's not wrong, you know. At this stage of the game, for Western Wolves, they know they can't really afford any mistakes. They're 1-0 behind. They lose this, and it's game over. And likewise for Absolute Legends, they don't want it to come down to a third and final game. They want to tie it up here in two. Nice boomerang blade down bottom there. Once again, onto Slepper. The uh, CS down there is 122-120. Oh, they're going to go in there. Ulti pop by Sevilla. Ulti's coming out, and they may possibly get themselves a kill onto Tarik here. He's been hit about... Three times, I think, from that turret. And there is R to win the Banana. world once again. And, well, we are going to see Kirk go down in amongst everything. He dove in there to get that kill onto Ash, which, was it worth it? No. Mm, no. No, absolutely not. Two for one there. And you can't dive like that. Oh, Angus can face checked into the... Uh, into a... I can't even remember the damn name of the thing now. A dark bindings, that's the one I was after. But you can't go diving onto someone on a tower that's got a stun, in fact two stuns on you on the tower, and then just when you've got a Carthus on the opposite team as well, because you're just going to say, oh, I'm going to let you take half my hit points on while I try and attack you on this tower, and let's see what happens. It's it's pretty obvious what the outcome will be, so kind of crazy attack methods from Tabs, uh, from Western Wolves there, sorry as I look towards Tabs. I keep getting drawn towards him, I don't know why I keep saying Tabs. At the moment, you can see in the mid, it is a farm fest, 171 to 172 CS between the two mid lanes. It is very big between these two. Six 16 minutes on. Remember, of course, we had that 300 CS Carthus uh, Scara, which he's kind of become fabled in. Uh, in and, and I'm just wondering if that's what he's thinking. You know what? I can beat that. I can do it. <laughs> I don't think he can. I think he's already missed a couple since he's died. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, but. Uh as I mentioned, it's all about the the position that we are in this best of three second game. Both teams want to, uh, or, you know, one team needs to win it. That's the biggest point from Western Wolves. That's why you either see something risky or you see something safe. This game is definitely falling into uh, the whole safe category. We've not seen Nunu, still not seen Nunu anywhere near anything that you could call a successful gank, to be honest. And we'll see. If that changes as he uh, goes later on. In terms of those junglers, 63 CS to 71 um, for Nunu at the... Uh, sorry, not for Nunu, for Maokai, who has the lead in 71. So Karthus is even taking away the Wolves at this point in the game because Maokai is down there in that tri bush. There is a ward down here just in the river. So uh, if he comes through the other side, then they are going to see him. And we are going to see the stun coming out now onto Prepared. Maokai has to make his move. And we do see the Ash Arrow coming down. Surely this is a dead Kerb. Ulti's going off left, right, and center. Why is Kerb not dead? There he is. Finally goes down. They'd focus in onto Prepared, which is a good choice. But still, they've lost their AD carry and they've not taken anything back for it. Yeah, they've not taken anything back. And like you say, Nunu hasn't really been that effective. As much as we'd like to see him being effective, he's not been. It will be good later on when he gets his blood boil onto Siva. And Siva ulti pops as well. That would be give him incredible damage. But, it, you know, as it is, it's just not happened out so far. Blue buff though going across towards Extinct. There you can see Maokai helping out with that one. And the farm fest will continue in the mid as they both close in on 200 CS between the two. So very much continuing on their path, as well as the top lane, in fact. They've not moved out of there yet. We've still only seen one dragon. We're nearly up to 20 minutes gone in this one. Remember, we were seeing Baron being pulled out, I think, by uh, CLG AL last time around at the 20-minute mark. So that is how slow this game pace is going. And it, it's quite possible that it can go this slow. You know, they could farm up and then you get one big epic team fight and that's it. The <laughs> game over. <laughs> we, hopefully we'll see a bit more than that though, Joe. Yeah, and if we look down the build, Sivia actually uh, with Kerp deciding to go more for uh, that speed building uh, Phantom Dancer before any BF Sword uh, base items. So, you know, relying on the damage that he gets in from those uh, Triple Doran's blades as well. Obviously, it would be ridiculously fast in a fight with the Phantom Dancer plus, uh, you know, Nunu in and amongst everything anyway but still needs that damage. He's currently 2-2-1 compared to the 2-1-1 of Ash, who uh, got pickaxe, got BF Sword, well on the way to uh, finishing off the Infinity Edge there. 
Are we going to see some more action down bottom? Actually, they are going to move in, in towards Slepper. He actually uses his arrow to try and stop that happening. Mass heals coming down from Soraka, and it will be enough to actually force them away. There's nothing to really counter this push. They need to be careful how oh. far they go out. In amongst this, there goes the crit. After I talked about no damage, there's two crits in a row there. Flash came through as well for Kerb. He's got to the... <laughs> he's taken one hit from the turret. Will shield up there just in time. And that's the cool thing uh, for Severe. She can't avoid that, but surely is going to have to uh, escape here somehow. They're going to get in there. Flash over from Riven, and he actually missed <laughs> the first hit, but won't miss the second. And that's great stuff to get in there. Actually, uh, let's have a look here in middle as well, because Carthus is hanging around. Mato Cannon is in that bush as well. Dragon must be due, like, really now at some second. And again, the two AD carries are the ones that go down. 3-3-1 three, three, compared to 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And you see Western Wolves, they're pushing for this middle turret. And Absolute Legend saying thank you very much. Oh, probably not thank you very much. But if you're going to take that, we're going to have ourselves a free dragon. And that's exactly how it's going to go down. Yeah, and again, it's just been a case of diving against that Carthus. And yes, he did manage to obviously counter it, putting his spell shield up. But he's just, well... Great, that's, that's, you've dived the game and you've lost 2-1. That, that's, that's two or three times down the bottom lane that's happened now. It's just not working out for them down there. I guess as long as Siva gets the kills, maybe it's okay. We've got a, a Zex Herald, a Zeke, a Zeke, I guess we're calling it Zeke or Zek. Zeke, I guess we're going to go with S stupid American names. <laughs> Zeke is definitely not a uh, European one. But... Uh, I, I'm going to call it Starks no matter what I think. It's one of those things. But uh, Slepper, well, he's going to continue chipping away at this mid turret. He probably will take it down here before this uh, last minion finally dies. Can he get caught out in the dark bindings? No, he cannot. So they're all going to back away. Sivir's actually got free reign down the bottom, so we'll take down that bottom turret. So that will be the second turret down. The pings go down on the river. And that is a clever one. So yeah, he's found it's quite clear to continue farming. But uh, yes, Kerb's Kerb's been a little over aggressive, I think, with uh, the Tarek. And he's kind of like baits him in. Tarek stuns him. And he's like, oh, I can get the kill. And then obviously realizes he's against about four different heels and a Carth Salty. Yeah, never gonna be good. We have Sonya's Hourglass finished now on Morgana. So we can expect her getting in the midst of things with that ulti going. Actually, Angus just watching out there in that tri-bush. Are they going to go for this Baron at 22 and a half minutes? There are certainly four of them in the river. Warwick is up at the top, which, uh, you know, it won't take him long to get down into position. Here goes the ulti from Nunu. And he's managed to, uh, well, just catch Angus, which is possibly the worst one in the team that you'd want to catch. In goes the uh, inevitable... Carthus suicide move straight into things. Oh, oh he comes shit. out from Ash as well, which landed right in the middle of the pack. And Yamato Cannon is a very, very dead man. That is three for nothing. That's a great exchange. Solo Gaming needs to get the hell out of there. He's going to be slowed down. They're going to keep pushing in. Surely he's going to be finished off. Stun came out, actually, onto Angosh. But this is at least one turret now in this for, um, uh, for Absolute Legends. And are they going to even try to defend the next one with Nunu and Tarek? You know, that was hideous. It was, it was truly hideous. Garthus just going la 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 la, laying his lay waist down in everyone with his defile on as well. And just like everybody's just like, oh, we can get him. No, actually, no, we're in a really horrible situation. Maokai's ulti was down, so there wasn't really any damage coming out from the Nunu ulti. It kind of, it kind of just baited them all in to draw them towards Absolute Legends, which is exactly what Absolute Legends wanted. They were just like, yeah, that's it. You come a little bit closer and we'll do so much more damage to you so uh you know they could have taken the tower they could have gone taken baron they could have done what the hell they like there it really was um just pretty pretty poor player from w w western wolves i was kind of shocked by it i was like oh, okay okay that yeah that's good you call him no no really peel off back away back away no oh but yeah, western wolves oh no they're going for baron this is this is a bad call from western wolves as well this is this is desperation moves i feel here 13 5 down they are down in the gold but and yes, there is quite a few ultis down, but they it's still not in a strong situation. They're going to dive in, Joe. I'm going to keep it going because you can see Ash Arrow going straight in there. Straight towards Kerb. Kerb absolutely popped on his feet. Didn't get anything out. Was in, a, in the arrow there. And that's another two, three deaths straight away for Western Wolves. And that's basically saying, have yourself a free Baron. 
Yeah, Tabs is still in there behind. Got no vision, actually, whatsoever of that one. But we'll probably uh, throw in some uh, randomness into all that. And they say thank you very much for that little bit of damage you've done. And Tabs <laughs> is going to ulti himself into that Baron area. They're actually flashing away from that one. But Tabs, well, you can pop your Zonyas. It's going to keep you alive for all three seconds max. After that one, Nunu's hanging around towards the back. Slepper's like, I fancy myself a bit of that. How are you ever going to escape from Ash with Nunu? That is a question which Solo Gamer is surely not going to be able to answer, especially with a flash in there as well. And there is the kill. Baron is also going to be finished off. They're fairly low, so we'll uh, expect them to all head themselves home. But 18-5, 9K gold, Baron buff in the hands now of Absolute Legends. Don't want to call it, to be honest. I hate doing that, but this is not looking like a good situation. Let's say that at least. No, they they have to play rolling their faces across the keyboard right now to uh, to 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 not lose this one. <laughs> to, to, so it's just they have to have us subbing probably. Just mash their mash their foreheads across QWER, and you may may be able to pick up a win against them. But that's about it. Um, yeah, it's really just just a, very much a one-sided game, and it, it was just. And it was it was a crazy desperation move, and I don't understand. And I can see the shout coming out, but they had no vision. They they knew that they were still kind of around there. I guess they just had that shout out to say they've gone back, and obviously it was a mistaken shout. It could just be the simple as that. I don't know. Oh, yes. Siva's going to get caught out surely here. Kerp is. No, oh no, Riven. Riven was just going down there. If it had just continued on to say, take this bottom turret. And now Riven, they've got the ping going out there. And Siva's going to back away. Bottom turret's going to go down. It's going to be a systematic destruction here. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that one lay waste. Chunking off the health. Oh, and the arrow's going to come in. It's landed on towards Solo Game. I'm not too sure if it'll be enough. It's going to be enough to... It's like a red rag to the bull right now. Absolute Legends going, yeah, we can have this one. Lordy's being dived in there. That's going to be Tabs popping his ulti. Trying his best to stay alive in amongst seven. It's not going to happen. Destroyed. And this is going to be GG for Absolute Legends. Now he's going to pop his ulti. I don't think he's going to... Yeah, he got interrupted by the Warwick ulti. Good call. Good call. He's going to back away from that one. They actually don't have enough minions either. So Extinct is trying to hang on in there. But that will be the turret going down. The can they get any damage across him? Boomerang Blade does go across, but it's not going to be enough, Jeff. Yeah, and Slow's going in as well. Oh. Look at that clip. It's just one lay waste that's knocked him down. And uh, Nunu's ulti does a fat lot of nothing in amongst that one. And they are going to be an ace, just, I think, as Lord and Spawn there. So he is still alive. But what's the turret going to do against four in this situation? Not a whole lot by the looks of things. And uh, good games, well played, already being called out, of course, as, uh, you know, Lots of seconds until they can uh, come up. Tabs doesn't have his ulti available. He's going to get his uh, um, <laughs> binding, that's the one, thrown in there. But it's not going to be enough. And we are going to see Absolute Legends picking up the grand final here of the Go For Law West monthly final for December. And I was being totally distracted there by listening to what they were actually saying there, the jokes at the end. But really, really great play by Absolute Legends. They've knocked out CLG in the semi final. And to be honest, I think that was the game of this tournament, this grand final. Certainly not quite up to uh, the excitement that we saw in that semi-final. But nonetheless, absolute legends, they didn't really make mistakes, and that's a thing for them. Yeah, and again, some very good games throughout the night. So uh, thanks for the team's playing. Thanks to Joe for uh, hosting it once again in that very cold studio of yours. It's uh, it's pretty clear just looking down the scores there that you can see it was very one-sided. It was a pretty much a farm fest. And as we mentioned, as soon as the farm fest happens, one big team fight will turn the entire game. And it just snowballs straight away from there. And that's exactly what we got. It is the danger of that situation. And both teams know it as well. Once they get in that situation, if they lose that crucial team fight or someone just gets picked off at the wrong point it can go horribly wrong for you which is probably why we've not seen that uh, that sort of meta style for for quite a while I, I'm trying to think of the last time we've seen it where it's been really AFK lane phases I guess Gamescom is probably the one I'm thinking of last time yeah it's been a very long time since you know I mean that new new pick yeah the start for him was an absolute shocker I mean it was a great idea what he did was 
really sound and really well played, but the fact that he didn't get away with it was a real punisher, I think, for uh, Nunu. He didn't see him coming in there, ganking as often as he really should have been, as he needed to be. Um, and, you know, from that, Absolute Legends, credit where credit's due. They've had a great game. Malunu, who's not even their normal jungler, had a stormer of a day today. He's finished his second game 3-0-13 with Maokai. We saw him um, in the other game as well, the first game. Um, also as Malkar, but the game before that, the semi-final, uh, he played actually as Nocturne, and really great play from him, considering that he's just a standing for this event. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, joining me, Demon, once again. It's always a pleasure to have uh, this going on. Actually, we're going to have some more League of Legends content coming your way in not the not-too-distant future, because on Monday, the German ESL Pro Series will be kicking off once again. Uh, we've got a bit of a beast of a match for you, actually. It's going to be alternate versus game. Two teams that did incredibly well in the last season, and that will be Monday night, half past eight, uh, Central European time, half past, um, half past seven, if you're in the UK and you know we'll post on Reddit and you can work your times out uh, from that one when we get near to it so yeah Demon thanks a lot for joining me anything you want to throw out there before we uh, get away yeah don't forget to follow us guys on Twitter on YouTube it is uh, QVDman is the Twitter Joe underscore Miller for uh, Joe and of course for Dman. if you're not following me subscribe to me on YouTube you can catch the Kings of Europe all the whole stream is on there in fact uh, everything as well as all these matches you've seen tonight will be on there so thanks for watching, guys. Congratulations once again to uh, Absolute Legends. And we'll see you on Monday for the German ESL Pro Series with Alternate taking on game. Good night. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you on Monday.